Hello YouTube, welcome to my core three revision video on volumes of revolution. So let's talk about volumes of revolution. What we do is we get a curve, okay, y equals f of x, i.e. something to do with x. And what we do is we spin it around, okay, we spin around the area and that produces a nice volume like this okay so in this case we would produce this kind of shape in uh, 3d okay um, and it's very useful for finding complicated volumes that you might not be able to do with conventional methods so let's talk about how we actually do that what we do is we think about this volume being made up of loads of little circles infinitely many little circles okay and each circle if you think about what value of x you're at um, the radius is going to be y okay formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared in this case our radius of each circle is y as we've said y would be to do with x so we're talking about pi y squared and we want to sum up infinitely many, which we can do by calculus integration. It is with respect to x, because we are going to substitute y in for something to do with x. And the limits that you go between are a and b, and they're what you must integrate between when you do the question. If you were going the other way around, so if you wanted to spin around the y-axis, then your limits would be here on the vertical y-axis and what you would need for your radius in this instance is x um, as a function of y and we could sum up by doing the integral of pi x squared with respect to y between your two limits let's say c and d okay going to look at two questions and we're going to use this um, these two formulas that you do have to learn and use the right one in the right case so past exam question diagram shows a curve y equals six over root x minus three the point p has coordinates zero p the shaded region is bounded by the curve lines x equals zero y equals zero and y equals p the shaded regions rotated completely around the y-axis to form a solid of, of, of volume v show that v equals 16 pi etc so that's the answer we're aiming for one very important thing to note here is we're spinning around the y-axis so we actually want x equals if you use y equals you're going to really confuse yourself. We need to substitute into the formula. We can use the limits a and b. Pi x squared dy, because it's around the vertical axis. Okay, and um, if we spin it around, that is the shape that we're going to produce. So let's rearrange y to make x a subject. We can uh, go from here. We can add on three. So we get 6 over root x. We can divide by y at 3 and times it by root x. So we get 6 over y at 3. Square both sides to get x equals 36 over y at 3 squared. Okay. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to fit all this in. We might have to erase a couple of things along the way. But I'm sure you can uh, forgive me for that. So let's use our formula and let's substitute in this as our x value. So here's the formula. We're integrating between 0 and p, p being the upper limit. And it's pi times by the function of x squared. Pi is a constant. It can wait outside for us. x squared is going to be this thing squared. So we get 36 squared, don't fancy working that out right now. Y add 3 to the power of 4 with respect to x. 
with respect to Y rather. Okay. And if you watch my integration video, this one will be very, very straightforward for you. The only difference is it's 36 squared. 36 squared is a constant. It might as well wait for us with pi outside. So what we're really interested in integrating is y add 3 to the minus 4. With respect to y, I keep writing x. You might have seen that we can uh, guess, and our guess in this instant would be to guess y add 3 to the power of minus 3. So when we differentiate, we get to minus 4. If you're not sure what I'm talking about here, check out the other video. When we do differentiate that, we are going to get minus 3, y add 3 to the minus 4. So the difference is this negative 3, um, because what we're really aiming to do is integrate. We do not have a negative 3 here, but we could actually get one, but never mind. Um, I'll do it this way instead. Put negative third, so we get rid of this when we differentiate. Okay, and that was what we wanted. So, all in all, that integrates to 36 squared times pi. And now we need to um, evaluate the limits of our answer, which is um, a minus a third y add 3 to the minus 3. And the limits are p and 0. Okay, I'm going to erase some more stuff again. So we've got some space. And we're going to evaluate our limits. So we're going to get 36 squared times pi, our upper limits, minus a third. y plus 3 to minus 3 can be on the bottom. p plus 3 cubed minus our second limit, minus a third, um, 3 to the minus 3, which is going to be 27 on the bottom. Okay, so we're going to get 36, going to have to figure out 36 squared at some point, just not quite ready for that yet. Um, minus this goes to plus, we'll put that at the front. 3 times 27 is going to be um, 3 times 27 is going to be 81. Okay, 1 over 81 minus a third p plus 3 cubed, running out of space again. You can see we're kind of getting close. Um, by the way, 36 squared, 1296 pi, 1 over 81 minus 1 over 3p plus 3 cubed. We now have to aim for this answer from what we've got. Um, you'll notice that we've got a third common in both that we could take out to front and then take out here. So basically you can divide your 1296 by 3 to get 4, 3, 2. Um, it gives us a 27 back. B plus 3 cubed. Um, we want a 27 on the top here. So what we can actually do is we can times into the bracket by a 27 borrowed from 432. And you'll realize, there needs to be a pi there, 432 divided by 27 gives you the 16 that we were after. And you can times in the 27 into um, the single bracket. 27 over 27 is 1. And we finally got to what we were aiming for. Phew, quite a tricky question, to be honest. It's six marks. Um, the hardest thing there was not the volume of revolution, 
is simplifying the algebra. Okay, next one. Show the derivative with respect to y of y ln 2y minus y is ln of 2y. So we're differentiating with respect to y. And we're going to use the product rule on the first thing. Differential of the first times by the second plus the first times the differential of the second. Now, ln um, ax actually goes to 1 over x. The reason is you get 1 over ax, and you have to, because of the chain rule, multiply by a, and the a and the a cancel, where a is any number. Okay, so that's an important thing to remember. So, 1 over y minus um, differential of y, which is 1. Now, y times y, 1 over y is 1. Take away the 1, leaves us with ln of 2y. So we've uh, done that, ln of 2y. Okay, moving on. The diagram shows the curve with the equation y equals a half e to the x squared. The point P, which is shown on the diagram, 2, a half e to the 4, lies on the curve. The shaded region is bound by the curve in the lines x equals 0 and y equals a half e to the 4, okay, which is here, this line. Find the exact volume of the solid produced when the shaded region is completely rotated around the y-axis. It's a very, very tricky and wordy question to do here. We're rotating around the y-axis, so like we've talked about, we need to change it to x equals. So let's get down to business. Let's rearrange this equation. Times by 2, take ln of both sides, and you're going to get... Um, Take ln of both sides, ln of 2y equals ln of e of x squared. Ln and e are inverses, so this bit is going to cancel. So you get that x squared equals ln of 2y. Now I'm not going to square root because in the formula that we're going to use, we're going to be integrating between our limits. And what we're integrating is pi, which can wait outside, times by x squared with respect to y. So why didn't I square root? Because we're going to be subbing in um, this thing straight into it. Okay? So we wanted x squared anyway. Now let's sub it in. x squared is ln of 2y. If you've been paying attention, ln of 2y should uh, ring a bell because we've just differentiated something to get it. And if you've watched my other video, the very, very important thing in core three and any maths is that the differential and the integral are opposites. So we now know how to integrate one of two y. It's this by going backwards. Okay. Now the limits, let's talk about the limits. The limits are going to go from here and here. So the upper limit is fine. It's just a half e to the 4. The lower limit, we still have to find out. So we need to know when does our curve cross the um, y-axis. And the y-axis is where x is 0. So you sub in x is 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So y is a half. So you've got your two limits. So you're going between a half and a half e to the 4. Okay, sorry if this is a bit crammed up. Like I've said, we know how to integrate ln of 2y from the first part. It is y ln 2y minus y. Our limits are, look how cool that is, it's just dropped right into place. Uh, you, can, you can't buy that stuff, can you? Okay, so um, let's sub in the upper limit. Going to go down here for the working out because it'll be quite long. Pi's going to just wait for us patiently. Summing in y here, a half e to the 4 ln 2y minus 
two y y is obviously a half e to the four half times a half just goes to e to the four minus a half e to the four lots of y's to substitute in uh lower limit minus the integral now we're subbing in not the integral now we're subbing in the half okay half ln two times a half is one so it's just ln of one which is zero you should know minus y um minus a half so after all that we're getting close to finishing pi things should start to cancel now look at this we've got ln and e they're inverses they're going to cancel which should just leave you with four four can times of a half to give you two e to the four here we've got minus a half e to the four this is cancelling to zero you've got minus and minus so you've got plus a half um, and let's just read the question find the exact volume so we do need to uh, just simplify that a little bit 2 is um, 4 over 2 so it's going to be pi e to the 3 over 2 3 over 2 e to the 4 plus a half um, job done that was two tricky volumes of revolution questions there very very difficult I actually picked those out because they were some of the hardest I could find in past papers as usual good luck in your revision thank you for watching and achieve maths